Hi everyone, welcome back to part 2. Now, in the last video, we went over our cooling tower, and we found our equation for the change in the mole fraction of water over the change in z. Um, so in this video, we're going to look at how the temperature changes, and how the, or the, how the temperature of water changes, and how the temperature of the gas changes. So, okay. So for our temperature of water, um, the way that I like to think about this is just set up a just some sort of uh, unit volume here, where we have uh, up here we have the enthalpy of water going in, and we'll have some sort of enthalpy of water going out. Um, so this is this is kind of set up like our cooling tower up here where we have the hot water coming in, we have the water coming out. Um, we'll have some sort of packing in here, which will be this, this little A. And then we'll have a, a cross-sectional area, which is big A. And then we'll have our DZ is our change in, in z, or height of the cooling tower. And we will say that the amount of water actually going in, we will call that L, and that's going to be in kilograms, kilograms per uh, meter squared per second. Um, and this water has a heat capacity that we'll call Cl. Um, and what we want is we wanted to set, set up an expression for change in the enthalpy of the water. Now this is going to be equal to first the amount of water actually going in, which is going to be L, which is what we just defined in kilograms uh, per meter squared per second. And we will multiply that by Cl. Uh, which is the heat capacity of the water, and then we will multiply by the change in the temperature of the water. So this will be the enthalpy change of the water, um, and I I believe. Since we define this as per meter squared uh, kilograms of water per second per meter squared of cooling tower, we will also need to multiply by the by uh, the cross section cross sectional area of the cooling tower. Okay, so we need to now uh, figure out why does this come about? Like, what is this actually coming from? This enthalpy change. Um, and it's it's coming from two two different things. So the first the first part of this enthalpy change is going to be from the temperature difference between the gas and the water. If we look back at our cooling tower, we have water going down and we have gas going up. So the di the temperature difference will cause an enthalpy change. So we'll have a driving force here of the gas temperature minus the water temperature, and we'll multiply by the heat transfer coefficient. And this is going to be per uh, volume, so we will multiply by our, uh, well, we would multiply by our uh, packing coefficient and then multiply by our volume. Um, because this, this uh, packing coefficient is it, it describes the interaction the amount of interaction between the air and the water or the gas and the water. Um, now another part that will cause an enthalpy change is going to be from our uh, change in uh, our mass transfer of water. 
uh, our mass transfer of water. So what we will need here is the, the molar flux of water multiplied by the heat of vaporization of water. So this is the amount of water being evaporated per mole, or the moles of water being evaporated. And this is the heat of vaporization of water, so this is how much heat. This relates the moles being evaporated to the amount of heat it takes to evaporate. And we will also include our uh, packing coefficient, which describes the amount, the interactions between the gas and the, and the water, and then our volume. Um, so this is our equation for the change in enthalpy of the water. And it looks like we can already cancel these A's, which is, which is very nice. And I'm going to rewrite this down here. And we want the change in the temperature of the water to, uh, over the change in Z as we go down the cooling tower. So we'll divide by DZ on both sides. And this will be equal to um, this uh, heat transfer minus the uh, mass transfer. And we can factor out this little a. And then we will divide by L and Cl. And that is going to be our expression for the change in the temperature of the water uh, per change in, in z, in the z direction. And let me just double check to make sure I included everything. Divide, we can factor that out. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, change in the temperature of the water. So let's go back up here. So this one is done. Now we need to find the change in the temperature of the gas. Now, there, there's a few ways we could do this. Uh, but the way I'm going to do it is going to be looking at enthalpy change in the gas and the, in the water. So kind of like before, we have an enthalpy of water. So we'll, we'll call this HW. Uh, and we have an enthalpy of water down here, HW. So we have HW coming in, we have HW going out. And then over here, we, we have HG. We have the enthalpy of the gas. Um, and again, this is going to be uh, DZ A and A. Now, oops. This is going to be H, the enthalpy of the gas. So the what we want to do is we want to express the enthalpy going down on both sides. So over here, this is going to be H, the enthalpy of the water, minus the enthalpy of the gas. And then down here, it's going to be actually be the same thing, the enthalpy of the water minus the enthalpy of the gas. And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to uh, specify that our process, this, this is happening in steady state. Which means nothing is changing with respect to time. Which, because of this, uh, we, we can say that this HW, the enthalpy of the water minus the enthalpy of the gas going in is the same as the enthalpy of the water minus the enthalpy of the gas going out. So the, the, the net enthalpy going down up here is the same as the net enthalpy going down down here. So this means the change in the net downward enthalpy equals zero, which means that the change in the enthalpy of the water equals the change in the enthalpy of the gas. And we're, we're going to use this to express the change in temperature of the of the gas. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to express the enthalpy of the gas. 
So the well the change in the enthalpy of the gas it's going to be equal to well the first part of this is going to be we want to consider how much how much gas is actually going in so that's going to be g the gas flow rate and if we remember this is per second kilograms per second per meter squared which means that we need to multiply by a which is this, uh, which is the cross sectional area and we also need to multiply by the heat capacity of the gas we'll call that cg and then we're going to multiply by the temperature of the gas so this is going to be the enthalpy of the gas and another thing we need to consider is the enthalpy due to um, evaporation or the mass transfer of, of the water of the water vapor so the way that we will describe this is going to be again we're going to take the amount of gas multiply it by a by the cross-sectional area to give us kilograms per second of gas we're going to divide by the molecular weight so this is going to be moles per second of gas we're going to multiply by the mole fraction of water in the air now this is the moles of water in the gas that's flowing and then we're going to multiply by the heat of vaporization of the water so what this is is the moles of the moles of water that are flowing in the air and then this heat of vaporization relates that to an enthalpy or how much heat is required to change the uh, water that's in the air which is the evaporation um, and then we're going to want the change in all of that and this is going to be equal to uh, if we remember we said the change in the enthalpy of the gas is equal to the change in the enthalpy of the water so what I'm going to do is go back up here to where we have the change in the enthalpy of the water and we're actually going to move this expression down so I'm going to try and copy this here I'm going to paste that and we will bring it down Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, that, and we're going to make a few approximations. Um, so first of all, we're going to assume that uh, the change in the gas flow rate and the specific the heat capacity of the gas equals zero um, and that's just going to uh, simplify our calculations um, realistically it wouldn't it wouldn't be zero uh, but we're, we're going to approximate it that it is zero and because of that we won't have to do a, a, a sort of a, a product rule for when we do the derivative um, so first thing all these A's cancel, which is very nice. And then we can we can pull this uh, GCG out. Um, we're trying to solve for the change in the temperature of the gas. So we have that there. Uh, we have plus, it looks like we have the heat of vaporization of a water multiplied by um, if we remember from the last video, we said that we're approximating that G over M is constant. So that means we don't need to worry about it in the in the uh, for for the derivative. We don't need to do a product rule. So we will pull that out, and then we will have dy equals. And then I will just copy this all down. And actually what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and divide by dz 
over here. Um, okay, we have that, and we have that. Okay, so actually, the next thing we want to look at is this, this dy over dz, because we actually know what that is. Uh, in the last video, we actually found what that is, and that's uh, negative ma over g times the uh, molar flux. So I'm going to just write that. So when we replace that, what we're going to have is this cancels with this, and what we're left with is negative lambda times small a times uh, molar flux. And if we look over here, we have negative lambda times a times molar flux, which is uh, <laughs> pretty awesome. So we can, we, we can actually just cancel these, which is very nice. Uh, and what we're left with is, uh, we're going to have change in the temperature of the gas over the change in Z equals A times H over this multiplied by the change in, multiplied by the difference in temperature. Oops. And there we have it. That's our expression for the change in the temperature of the gas. Okay, so now what we have is three differential equations, one for the change in the temperature of the gas, the change in the temperature of the water, and the change in the mole fraction of the water. So from here, we're actually gonna go to Python to code this. Um, but actually, before we do that, I, I think I want to define a few more things. Um, if, if we remember from, from the videos on the, uh, the wet bulb temperature and the Lewis relation, uh, we know that the Lewis relation for moist air is that the heat transfer coefficient over the mass transfer coefficient is actually equal to the volumetric heat capacity. And what this means is that um, if we have either the heat transfer coefficient or the mass transfer coefficient, we can, we can go from one to the other using the volumetric heat capacity. Um, so we're going to be using this uh, in our code to, to go from one to the other. Um, now, actually, looking back up here at our, at our drawing of the cooling tower, um, so this, this gas flow rate that's going in, uh, this would actually be measured. And if this were to be measured, it would be done with something like a, a pitot tube um, or, or something, similar, sim and something similar to a pitot tube. Um, but what that actually measures is the velocity of the, of the gas. So uh, we're going to know the velocity of the gas going in. But what we need is we need to go from the velocity of the gas to, to uh, kilograms per second per meter squared of, of gas. So we're, we're almost going to need to convert this to, 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 to kilograms per meter squared per second. And in order to do that, we would actually multiply by the density. Uh, is that, well, density is going to be kilograms per meters cubed. And then our velocity is going to be meters per second. And if we do this, what we'll end up with is kilograms per meter squared times seconds, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we would multiply by the density. Um, and if we were to express this density uh, differently, we would express it in terms of pressure times the molecular weight 
divided by r uh, and divided by t of the of the in of the inlet. Um, and then times the velocity of the gas. Uh, so that is how we would express using using the velocity of the gas going in, which is something that's measured. We would multiply by these by uh, this here, and that would give us the uh, well. That would give us uh, the air that's going in. Um, so that's how we would get the air that's going in. Now. We already defined that the total uh, gas phase that's going into our cooling tower is equal to the amount of air plus the amount of water. So we need to think of a way to go from air, the amount of air going into the amount of water. And we can actually set up a bit of a ratio to do this um, between air if we take the amount of air that's going in, divided by the molecular weight of the air, divided by the amount of water going in, over the uh, molecular weight of the water, this would give us the moles of air and the moles of water. Um, since we have a two, uh, two components here in our system, and we already know that the mole fraction of water in the air is y, that would mean that the total moles of water is equal to the mole fraction multiplied by the total flow rate. So this would be y times g. And since we only have two components, that would mean that the, that the rest of it is air. So that would mean that the total flow rate, total mole flow rate, times 1 minus y, which is the mole fraction of water, this 1 minus y would be the mole fraction of the air, that gives us the total moles of air. Uh, so we could cancel these here. And now we have we have this 1 minus y over y. Um, so rewriting this, we have the amount of air going in divided by the, uh, the molecular weight of the air multiplied by the molecular weight of the water divided by the uh, mass of the water going in equals 1 minus y over y. And we're actually going to use this to set up an expression for the amount of water that's in the air going in. So we would multiply this over and then divide by 1 minus y over y. So what, you, what we would have is this. Uh, divided by the molecular weight of the air times y minus or y over one minus y. Okay, so I'm actually going to when we go to code, we will come back to this. It'll be easier to find it with big circles. Uh, we'll go ahead and circle this too. And we will circle this. Okay. Um, anything else we need to define before we code? I think it would be a good idea to define our heat capacity of the gas. Uh, as this will, this depends on the heat capacity of the gas and the flow rate. So this would be equal to the heat capacity of the air times the flow rate of the air plus the heat capacity of the water uh, times the flow rate of the water. And this is the flow rate of the water vapor that's in the air, that's in the gas phase going in. Uh, and we would need to weigh this by dividing by the total flow rate. Um, and, ah, last but not least, we're going to need to define the 
the uh, average molecular weight of, of the gas. And this one's a, this one's a bit tricky. Um, but the way that we're actually going to do this is, is, is kind of cool. So we're looking for kilograms per mole. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to take the total mass flow rate, which is going to be the air plus the water. This is in kilograms per meter squared times seconds. And we're going to divide by the mole flow rate. So we divide by the molecular weights, and that would give us moles per meter squared times seconds. And actually, when we when we take a look at our units here, this cancels, and what we're left with is kilograms per mole, which is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for kilograms per mole. So this is going to be how we can express the our molecular weight of air and water. Okay, so this should be everything we need for coding for Python. Uh, now, before I go to Python, I'm going to go back up here and I want to take a look at the, at the at our problem for a second. So, we define this as zero. So that means this is our initial condition up here. Now we know what the temperature of the water going in is. We don't know what the temperature of the gas going out is. We don't know. We don't know what the mole fraction of the water in the air coming out is. So we can just say up here, we don't know what y, what the mole fraction of the water is. Um, but down here, we, we will get, we know the velocity of the gas going in, which means we can solve for G, uh, we can solve for the, for, uh, the amount of air going in and the amount of water going in, which means we know what this G is. And we know, we know what the temperature of the gas going in is. And we also know what the mole fraction of the uh, water going in is, uh, of the water in the air going in is, because that would be equal to, uh, since we're using uh, air from the environment, it would be equal to the relative humidity, or we would use the relative humidity to determine that. So why, so we know what Y is down here. So we also, uh, we'll know what, what the temperature of the water coming out is. So what we're left with is an initial condition up here where we have two unknowns. We have, we have our three differential equations, but our initial conditions for two of them are unknown. So the way we would have to solve this is we would have to make a guess for the temperature of the gas coming out is and for the uh, mole fraction of water that's in the air. We would need to make a guess for those two. From there, we would solve our differential equations down the column. And when we get to our, our uh, final value down here, we would need to check to see if everything matches. Uh, is Tw correct? Is the mole fraction correct? Is the temperature of the gas correct? If it is, that means our guesses are correct. If not, that means one of our guesses are wrong. And we have to go back and make new guesses. Um, so we, we know what our, what our differential equations should give us at the bottom of the cooling tower, but we need to make guesses for the top. So what we kind of run into is uh, a sort of a, a double iteration where we, where we need to make guess, guesses for two differential equations. Um, and from there, we're actually going to use Python for this. And from there, what we will do is we will use uh, a sort of a root solver in, in Python to find what values of 
of the temperature of the gas going out is and the mole fraction of the gas going out is of water and the gas going out is. Which values of these two give us the correct values at the bottom of the, of the cooling tower? So that should be it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to actually work this out in Python. We're going to solve the differential equations and we're going to use uh, root solver. And then we will graph our solution. Um, so yeah, that's, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. And in the next video, I will see you. Uh, we'll be in Python. So I'll see you in Python.